Welcome to ECE 320 Electronics 1, lecture number 14, Comparators and Schmidt Triggers. Now, a comparator and a Schmidt Trigger are ways to output a binary signal based upon something. To give a little bit of background why you might want to do this, I'd like you to take on a little tour of our garden and our greenhouse. One of the prerequisites of living in North Dakota is you have to enjoy your summers. Our winters are nasty enough that if you don't enjoy your summers, you won't survive out here. One of the ways I enjoy my summer is for gardening. So here we have our garden, along with our cat. We've got a bunch of daisies, delphiniums, um, what the pink ones are called, yarrow, a uh, little bird bath, daisies. Just kind of a nice way to enjoy the summer. In the winter, you can't enjoy the summer quite the same way. So what we did is we added a greenhouse on top of our deck. This is a 12 by 12 deck. On top of it, we bought a greenhouse from Cedarbilt Greenhouses out of British Columbia. And I'll show you that next. So this is what our greenhouse looks like on the inside. It's a 12 by 12 lean-to where we keep our plants. In the summer, we're able to see our plants on the outside, so it's not quite as necessary. But in the winter, it's really nice to have a nice sunny place where you actually have green and some flowers. The problem with the greenhouse is at night it cools off, so we close the door. During the day when the sun comes out, it gets up to 100, 143 degrees in here. Even in January when it's 20 below, it'll be 100 degrees inside the greenhouse. So we need a way to open up the door. That's where a comparator comes into play. A comparator is this little temperature sensor. When it gets above 80 degrees, it turns on and turns on a small motor. What that motor does is it then pulls the door open. That's a comparator. At 80 degrees, it opens the door. When it drops below 80 degrees, the motor turns off. There's also a Schmidt trigger. Suppose I want to open the door at 80 degrees and close it at 70. That'd be a Schmidt trigger. I've got this hysteresis, that 10 degree difference between 70 and 80. Uh, we don't actually do that because I'm afraid that I might have a cat stuck in the door when it closes. So this one just opens as a comparator. Um, but that's kind of the idea. If you want to turn on a motor or off a motor at certain points, how do you do that? So this lecture will look at how do you actually build a comparator in a Schmidt trigger to do things like open a door at 80 degrees. Now coming back to what a comparator does. The way you actually implement the function where you open the greenhouse door or close it is through an op-amp. An op-amp is a high-gain amplifier. The output is the difference between V plus and V minus, and typically the gain is large, like 200,000. For short, the symbol for an op-amp is just triangle with a plus minus. Now there's three circuits we use with op-amps. There's a comparator, a Schmidt trigger, and an amplifier. This one's actually an instrumentation amplifier. In the third case, where you have negative feedback, this is what you covered in circuits one. This is when you have V plus equal to V minus. In that case, the power supply doesn't really matter as long as the power supply is sufficient to allow the output to be whatever you want, you know, three volt, four volt sine wave. They're irrelevant. So oftentimes these aren't used in the simulation. The ones we're gonna look at today are comparators and Schmidt triggers. This is where the power supply does matter. Here, I don't have negative feedback. And what that does is the output is going to slam high or slam low. I can't go beyond my power supply limit. So if I make my power supply 5 volts and 0 volts, then when the op amp slams high, it'll slam to 5 volts, logic 1. Or when it slams low, it'll slam to 0 volts, logic 0. So what that means is the power supply is important for these two circuits. In addition, you can kind of pick what you want your logic levels to be. TTL levels are 0 volts, 5 volts. You put, could pick 0 to 10 volts, whatever you like. We'll look at these two circuits um, in this lecture. Now, again, the power supplies do matter. So when you go into circuit lab, there's two different op amps. Here, you got to make sure you use the op amp where the power is specified. That is going to affect how the circuit behaves. Now, let's start out with a comparator. What a comparator does is it's an op amp with no feedback. The gain of an op amp is ideally infinity. It's practically about 200,000. 
So what happens is if x is just slightly more than v minus, then the output's going to try to slam to infinity, and it's going to rail at 5 volts. If x is slightly less than 4 volts, it'll slam to minus infinity, which in this case is ground. So what you get is an input-output characteristic looks like this. It's a stair step. If x is slightly bigger than 4, the output is logic 1, 5 volts. x is slightly less than 4, it's logic 0, 0 volts. You can check that in Circuit Lab. If I take that same circuit, have the input be a sine wave. This is a 2.5 volt sine wave centered at 2.5 volts. When it passes through 4 volts, the output slams high. When it passes through 4, 4 volts low, it'll slam low. So notice the output is stuck between 0 volts and 5 volts. That's set by my power supply. Um, and the threshold where it switches is set by your B minus. Now, in this case, when the input is bigger than 4 volts, the output is high. Less than 4 volts is low. You could switch that. To switch that, just switch the plus minus signs. Uh, for example of where to use a comparator, this is what's used in the greenhouse. I've got a temperature sensor along with a resistor. As temperature goes up, resistance goes down. When the temperature gets really, really high, x goes to zero, v plus is more than v minus, and the output slams high. That turns on the motor, that opens up the door. So it opens up when it's hot. When it's cold, the motor turns off. To figure out where this 2.778 volts, what you do is for the thermistor, calculate the resistance at 20C, where I want it to turn on. That's 1250 ohms. Pick a voltage divider. This 1K is really arbitrary. What that does, though, is once I pick it, then at 1250 ohms, X has some voltage, 2.778 volts. So I want to switch at 2.778. In order to determine the plus minus, take the limits. At really high temperatures, R goes to zero, X goes to zero. At high temperatures, I want the motor to turn on. So connect this to the minus input. Uh, with that, that's kind of the comparator that, that I have to open the sunroom door. Next, we'll look at Schmidt triggers. A comparator turns on and off at a single voltage. Uh, sometimes you don't want to do that. For example, in the sunroom, I might want to open the door when it gets above 70 degrees and close it when it gets below 60. That hysteresis uh, it helps keep the motor from chattering on and off. To do that, I use the Schmidt trigger. Uh, Schmidt trigger is one of the few cases you'll ever use positive feedback. Positive feedback is unstable. What that means is if the voltage is too high, make it higher. If you're going too fast, go faster. If it's too hot, add more fuel. The reason I do that is because this line right here, when V plus equals V minus, is unstable. If I'm just a hair above that line, the positive feedback makes the output voltage slam high to 5 volts. I'm just a hair below that line, I'll slam negative to zero volts. And that's what I want. This presumably is going to drive a transistor. If I design a transistor so that five volts is on, zero volts is off, I know what's happening with the transistor. I don't want anything in the middle because that'll put the transistor in the active region. So this positive feedback makes sure that I'm at my logic levels, five volts or zero volts. The way you design it, this slope right here is the gain R1 over R2. Uh, the on voltage is right here. It kind of goes by symmetry. When the output is zero, y is zero, this is zero. When I switch, v plus is v minus. So by symmetry, the two inputs are the same. Uh, the offset is right here. And x goes on the plus side. When x is really, really large, the up it goes high. And there's a counter to that. If I want to go the other direction, I just connect x to the minus input. And again, the voltage where I turn on is your offset, and the slope is R1 over R2. So those are the two Schmidt triggers. As an example, let's design a circuit that turns on at 20C, turns off at 15C, and no change between 15 and 20C. In that case, first I have to pick a temperature sensor. Here I'm choosing a thermistor. Uh, then a voltage divider to convert resistance to voltage. What that does is at 20C, when the output turns on, R is 1250 ohms and X is 2.77 volts. At 15C, when Y is off, R is 1576 ohms and X is 3.05 volts. 
I'll now use a Schmidt trigger. So this is where I turn on 2.77. This is where I turn off 3.74, 3.47. When x is large, the output is low, so I connect to the minus input. I turn on at 2.77 volts, so that's my offset. And the slope, output changes by 5 volts as the input changes by about 0.7 volts. Gives gain of 7. Pick this to be a 7 to 1 ratio. And I chose 100K, 700K because I don't want to do loading. This is actually in parallel with R. That changes the resistance slightly, slightly changes the circuit. If I keep this large relative to R, say R is about 1K, this is 100 times larger, almost 1,000 times larger. The change in voltage isn't too large, so when I simulate it, I'll get almost this circuit. To simulate it, you could really have three options. Uh, same as lab. What I could do is build the circuit and sweep the temperature and make sure that switch is at 20 Celsius and 15 Celsius. That's if you have a control temperature chamber. What you could also do is replace the thermistor with a resistor, in which case I use like a potentiometer and turn it. I should turn on at 1250 ohms and turn off at 1576 ohms. And the circuit is dumb. It doesn't know where you get the resistance. Is it a thermistor, light sensor, temperature sensor, potentiometer? It doesn't know. It doesn't care. A uh, third option is to sweep the voltage and see that it turns on at 2.77 volts, turns off at 3.47. That's what it did in this case. I'm going to make V5 a voltage that's going to sweep. I'm going to have it sweep uh, passing below 2.7 and above 3.47 volts. So in the simulation, this is what I have. My input is a 3 volt offset sine wave, peak of 1. So there it goes up and down. Notice when it goes below 2.77 volts, the output turns on. When it goes above 3.51 volts, it turns off. The difference in the two voltages is your hysteresis. With that, you could build things like a controller for the door of your greenhouse or other devices. Uh, that's lecture number 14 for ECE320, electronics, Schmidt triggers, and comparators.